But I'm just simply saying, when you think that you're all alone and your family can't get to you and you don't know what to do and you are feeling as helpless as you've ever felt and you're afraid of dying, what you're talking about right now concerning Jesus is important to them. All right? I want you to continue. And you know, the Bible indicates, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And people need to know that God does see them, God does see their need. You know, one day I was talking to a friend of mine who was dying of cancer. He was in such pain he could scarcely bear it. But he said that he got out of bed and sat on the couch and he said, you know, all the faith drained from my soul. I was there alone. But even then, he knew he was being seen by God. And so the friends that you just spoke about, John, they need to be reminded of that. Now, as we go through this text, we also realize that sometimes Jesus comes to us in disguise. We don't recognize him. He's walking on the sea, and they think it is a ghost. They thought it was some kind of a spirit. And Jesus said, no, it is I. And you know, sometimes God comes to us in the hard times of life. He comes when things are most difficult, when we are most discouraged, Jesus shows up. It's also interesting that he comes in the fourth watch of the night, that's four o'clock in the morning, when it is the darkest, when the disciples were the most weary, when they were most discouraged, Jesus shows up. And I want to tell the people who are listening today how important it is to realize that sometimes God does wait for us to become desperate because only desperate people pray and sometimes it is only in our desperation. You were talking about COVID, for example, and the fear of death. Yes. Sometimes it is those moments that draw us to God when we begin to realize that we really do need to prepare for death. And we'll be talking about that in just a moment. Now, the rest of the story is very interesting and people can read it on their own, but it is here in the text that Peter says, if it's you, Lord, let me walk to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. John, for a few moments, there were two people that were walking on the water. If you had had a camera, you'd have noticed that Jesus comes walking across the water as if it is a marble floor, and Peter is doing the same. But then we read, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. I find that interesting. You know, sometimes people pray long prayers, <laughs> and that's fine. But there are also times of desperation where only a short prayer will do. Yes. Three words, Lord, save me. And there are people who are watching today, and that's what they should be saying to Jesus, to save them from their sins, from their discouragement, and from their helplessness. And then... Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, Jesus is the immediate Jesus. Three times in this passage, it says that Jesus immediately did something. Immediately, he told them to go into the boat. Immediately, he told them who he was. Immediately, he reaches out his hand to Peter. And you know, when Peter saw the wind, that's when he began to sink. Right. And when the trials of life come upon us and when things close in on us and discouragement and disappointment and hunger and uncertainty are around us, it is at that time when we have to look beyond our circumstances and we have to see Jesus because when Peter saw the wind and stopped looking at Jesus, he began to sink. Now, there's something else in this passage. Jesus, of course, has total control over the physical universe. After all, he created it, the Bible says. 